know if I do this. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm recording. All right, I'm just recording. Okay. Um, do you need Hi, to... Patreon page. What? Hi, Brian Vanderpool. Do you need to take a drink of coffee? Yes. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> There's no way people pay to see this. Yeah, yeah, they are now. They are now. They are now. Well, I just think it would be fun to do this little interview with you now that we have... The record's done. The record's done. Yes, it's, it's off, off onto off the to mastering. mastering. Yes. And who's doing the mastering? Mr. Nathan James in yep. Phoenix, Arizona. Nathan James in Phoenix, yes. Arizona, and he is a he's bad a, ass. Yes, he is. He's a he's a mastering engineer. Um, which, if you don't know what mastering is, it's uh, most people don't, including me. It's still there's still a little bit of a mystery to mastering. It's more science than art. Uh, he makes it. Uh, yeah, it's multi band compression and EQ that's all automated, and he makes it loud enough so that it matches the stuff on the radio, and he can boost certain frequencies and cut certain frequencies at certain times. And yeah, it's really nerdy, but it makes it sound great. Yeah, it's and bit, yeah. It's, it's the final step before it gets like to put you. on Spotify. Exactly. Yes. So when, Brian, when you're saying like when you listen to it on the radio, and everything is equal mm -hmm. level. So what do you mean by that? Uh, I don't want to bore your listeners with They lots. want to know everything. Well, when and you're they mastering to... Fast forward, to, to <laughs> fast forward this part. So when you're mastering a song, you want to keep it between like negative uh, 14 and negative 16 LUFS. And that's <laughs> that okay, competes let's with. Okay, put it the, in layman's terms. Okay, so it's basically just loudness. It's like uh, the simplest term is loudness. So it's like if you listen to a Spotify song and it's a certain loudness, and then you go to the next one and it seems quieter. So mastering just ma and that happens when bad mastering occurs. So it's like basically you want to make sure that every song you listen to on Spotify sounds relatively the same amount of loudness, so that you don't have to turn your volume up and down as you go. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what mastering It's kind of like also sometimes when you go to the movies mm -hmm. and or if you're listening to it on TV. And yeah, TV, and like and when a the music's really loud. Typical, then, yeah. Then when people start to talk and it gets really quiet, you have to turn your volume. Exactly, up. that's bad mastering. Or my favorite is uh, not favorite, but my favorite is like they intentionally master commercials much louder than they do television shows and it's so it grabs your attention mm -hmm. or in my case just annoys me and then i will never buy your product <laughs> so <laughs> so um to my patrons i also wanted to introduce you i had done it already in a little blog post but this fun little video uh -huh. just to to see have this like little conversation about what it was like to make this project mm -hmm. together from your side of the story and like from my side of the story and you don't have to lift me up. It's okay if it was a really Such shitty experience. Such a bummer experience. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, so Sarah Routh comes to the house around 9.30, uh, usually with donuts or some sort of pastry. And then we sit around the kitchen table and we talk about life and drink a lot of coffee and eat a lot of pastries until we realize, oh wait, there was a reason you came over today we should probably do some work <laughs> and then we go down to the studio and we work on whatever we're feeling that day so sometimes it's uh putting instruments on a song sometimes it's mixing uh something sometimes it's shooting around different ideas on how to best you know produce a song but yeah that's what happens every day and it's a blast i love it and we have been Working on Heavy Love for almost a year. Yeah, it's been a while, off and on. It's usually like a couple days a month. Yeah. We'll kind of come in, and that's in the, like a, for a couple days. It's been pretty organic. It's been really fun doing it this way, because often sometimes people will come in to do a record, and it'll be like 10 days in a row, and by the end you're just like, oh my God, if I have to hear this song one more time, I'm going to blow my brains out. <laughs> but it uh, this has been fun because it's like you work on it for a couple days and then you have like this long break and so you come back and it feels fresh and new and you're still inspired to work on it. Um, whereas sometimes if you work on the same song over and over again, you sometimes can get burnt out. And yeah. that definitely wasn't the process with yeah. this record. You were 
What did you do on the record? I what did you do? On the I did. Uh, what did I do? I did a little bit of everything. You did I'll this, play. Did all yes, this. Yes, I I pushed buttons. Stuff. I pushed buttons and I set up mics so that I can. <laughs> Basically, my job is to capture the instruments as beautifully as possible. So I try to make Sarah's guitar sound as close to Sarah's guitar as you can possibly make it. And her voice to sound is, is as close to her real voice in person as you can make it. So that was always my job. And, uh, and then I sometimes played guitar or banjo. Sometimes I played drums and bass. I can play like a little bit of a bunch of different instruments, which comes in handy sometimes. You played a really really great shaker play a lot of shakers a lot of hand like hand clapping and snaps i can snap the hell L uh, out of a, anything out of track yeah really i think <laughs> i challenge you folks to when when you get the record and you listen to it which tracks have brian snap yes in it, so it it makes the song typically <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, who is that guy snapping? Man, I gotta hire that guy for my next yeah, record. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's a hundred dollars an hour, please. Yep, it's true. Not per track, per hour. Per hour, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Been working on it for years. What was I'm gonna get real? What was yeah. the least enjoyable part of least enjoyable part. I know. You don't have to lie and say everything was enjoyable, but like what was the hardest part of making this record? Not not connecting it to me, but like the hardest or most challenge Okay, let me rephrase that question. <laughs> let me back it up. What was the most challenging part of making Heavy Love? Most challenging. Um something that might have been different or Oh, okay. Well, I remember at one point you came in and because for a while we were doing a lot of real instruments, real drums, real guitars, real pianos, all that kind of stuff. And at one point you brought in a song and we we're like, let's just abandon the organic instruments and let's do uh, synths mm -hmm. and like, like sampled drums mm -hmm. and stuff that both of us were kind of like... It's a little out of our wheelhouse. It's not something I do a lot. And so, and it was like, both of us were like, this is new water for us. So like, we're, let's just try to figure out how this works. And so we, it wasn't, it wasn't not fun, but it was definitely a challenge of being like, how do we make this sound good? Yeah. As to people that don't always work with synths and virtual instruments like that. How do we make like this cool beat or this cool kind of like track? So let's um, say, like in Thoughts Direction, oh yeah, that that um, that drum loop. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how that was created? That's right, exactly. So that was a tough one because we tried to start something from scratch, and it's like, oh my gosh, like this is just not working. So we just went in, and I played a drum beat, kind of like on a drum set, uh, kind of until we found kind of like the groove that we wanted, and then we just went back and replaced all those. Uh, those drums so it's like so I was playing a kick snare and hi-hat so it's like great now let's put in a cool sounding like sampled uh, kick drum it sounds a little bit more hip-hop a little bit more R&B and then let's put in a fake snare like an 808 kind of classic kind of <laughs> hip-hop snare and then for the hi-hats we'll use something else and so it was uh, we kind of built it that way so using the bass of what you recorded exactly then we went in there and we, we found the, the, the sound yeah. the sample that we really liked for that track and like put a layer exactly. on top of it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's all like being fast forward. a little therapy forward. session. Yeah. I love this. And this is all fast forward. <laughs> People are going to be like, skip, skip this section. <laughs> I mean, this is, I think that this is a big, a big part of why patrons, you know, are part of this community just because they want to, it's super cool. Learn. It's my favorite part. Like whenever there's like a record that I love that comes out, I nerd out and I'm like, who engineered that record? Do they have some weird video about how they came up with that guitar sound or that guitar yeah. tone? And people put it out there. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I remember the Casey Musgraves record was like two years ago or three years ago or something. And there was a guitar tone on it that I just loved. It had this beautiful acoustic guitar. And I looked it up and the engineer of that record 
put on there like, yeah, I used a U67 and I ran it through an EU 1073 and I put this 1176 compressor on it. And he basically just wow. spelled out how to get that guitar tone. And you went home and, and you tried I went and I was like, oh my gosh, that's my, I love that stuff. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to work with in your studio? Ooh, that's Maybe tough. this? My favorite thing <laughs> is, I have a few things. Yeah, this Benson Reverb right here. This is called the Studio Tall Verb. And it is a very unique sounding reverb. Um, it emulates a thing called an EMT 140 plate, which was like a six, 1960s uh, reverb unit that like the Beatles used. Uh, and it was like the size, it would take up a whole room. It was this giant steel plate suspended by springs. And they would put these kind of uh, cone contacts on it, hmm. send like your vocals to it, which would vibrate the metal plate. And then these contacts would then pick up the vibrations and send it right back to the board. So it sounded beautiful, but it also took up an entire room and it was constantly Jeez. breaking down. And so there's always like a guy back there soldering wires and stuff. Cause it was like, you know, I think- What's your job? Oh, I'm pounds. just a yeah. Benson solderer. Exactly, right? So <laughs> this, uh, this unit was made in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> And I was on a waiting list for two years. This is so nerdy. This is another thing you can skip. I was on like a waiting list on it for two years because they're just so, they're hard to make. They don't make very many of them. And it's, it's a very popular company. So you had to be on a waiting list. And then during the pandemic, they did this thing where they were like, all right, we're down to like a skeleton crew. So we're gonna abandon our waiting list. And the first 50 people to order something, we're gonna bump you to the top of the list. And it's, uh, they got through all 50 orders in two and a half minutes. What? Yeah, two and a half minutes. And I was ordered 25. And I was like, it was like, I started at 8 a.m. And I was like, click, 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 click. And I was 25 <laughs> and I snuck it in. So, That's yeah. like getting the PS5. I know, it was very much, except <laughs> way, way nerdier. <laughs> so that's definitely one of my favorite, favorite things. Um, I also really love these preamps here. These, I could not live without these. These are called Neve 1073 preamps and they've got beautiful transformers in them that make everything sound warm and buttery transformers and another thing i really love it's already set up i wonder if i can zoom in oh yeah that microphone right there is another one that i cannot live without that's my favorite it's called a neumann u67 it's neumann very, neumann U67. it's it's german it's a german microphone <laughs> <laughs> they sure do know how to make a good microphone mm -hmm. well what else do you want to talk about? I want to talk about, um, this is good editing. Tape machines? Tape machines. Yeah. Yes, that's the next project I know. for you. Got a tape machine with a bunch of new old stock tape from the 70s, and I'm going to kind of experiment with it. See, see what happens. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, What do you think is next for for let's just bring it to just you what's next, next for me for for oh my gosh. like where do you see yourself in five years Sarah? yeah okay i see myself with a lot more gray hair uh -huh. <laughs> i'm for it yeah i can't wait for gray hair i want to embrace my old age i know yeah it's great yeah um We were talking about an all girls music festival, a yeah. women only music festival. I want to see that happen in five years. Yeah, that'll be fun. Right? It'll be rad. We'll make that happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. Okay. Um, so you're from Massachusetts. You're from Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. And what has your experience been here in Des Moines being one of a handful of recording studios. Yes. And also um, you and your band and your, your wife, mm -hmm. Sarah, are in the band Well Pennies. That's right. Um, what have those experiences been, you know, here in Des Moines? How have you? Uh, I love Des Moines. Yeah. Um, I definitely found a community here that I've never found anywhere else. I grew up in Boston, 
which they have a, a lovely folk scene out there. So I grew up playing in like folk clubs and open mics all over kind of the New England. But it is a very kind of closed, tight knit community there. It's really hard to break into, if that makes sense. There's there's like a club. That it's like a middle all, school clique. Yeah. Like I just went back to Boston last month, and I go to all the same. I just kind of went around to Cambridge and all the clubs I used to go to, and I'm like, oh, it's the exact same 12 people playing <laughs> from 12 years ago and the last time I was here, and then the same 12 people that played 20 years ago. So it's a very close knit. So it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to find a community there. And then I lived in Los Angeles, where there's too many goddamn people, mm -hmm. and it's hard to find a community there because you know you invite somebody to do a show and they're like, eh, it's more than three exits. I'm out. Yeah, or it's raining. It's raining. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, it's like, uh, a man will do it. There's a lot of there's a lot of like shallow <laughs> relationships out there, as you can imagine, um, and it's miserable. And uh, it's really hard to find a community. Luckily, we after eight years, we did find kind of our band and our kind of group. But it's uh, it's really hard to be a musician out there. That and like this house would be this tiny little ranch that I'm living in would be three million dollars in a bag. At least, it. yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so we moved out here and we bought a house for $1.50 and uh, <laughs> we set up this recording studio really just for us and then because Des Moines got this super vibrant art scene and tons of people doing music and not only tons of people doing music, tons of people doing great music, um, super talented, unique, interesting things, people being their own artists, not trying to be like in LA, it was a lot of people just trying to sell their art. Because mm -hmm. out here, there's people just making their art. And uh, we immediately found a community. It was wild. It's not it's unlike anything that I've experienced anywhere else. So all of a sudden, you got cool people like Sarah just knocking on your door, like, hey, I heard you guys are doing music and let's hang out and talk. And it's like, I'm like, who? You're it's so weird at first. You're just like, who are these people? <laughs> what do you want? And uh, yeah. no, they're just really interested. Lo and behold, I was yeah. stalking your Instagram yeah. <laughs> for like months prior. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we love it. This is like, yeah, it blows our mind. Whenever our band comes out from LA, they're always just like, what are we doing? Los Angeles. Yeah. They're like, and they're always like, don't tell me how much the house costs. I don't want to know. And <laughs> so, well, we welcome them all. Yes, that's what I told them. It was like, there's a place for you here in this community. Most We'd definitely. Like to, yeah. But yeah, I, I love it. I found it a very easy community to uh, get into because everyone's very inclusive and supportive of each other and uh, very welcoming of outsiders, which I love. It was great. Yeah. So yeah, it's been like five years. It's been crazy. Well, I'm just really happy that both you and Sarah are here and your, your puppy kids, Banjo yes. and Pickles. We got, we got some pandemic puppies. Yeah. They are currently taking a nap. Yes. <laughs> but, balls um, of energy. I couldn't be more excited about this project, and I, I'm so grateful to you and to Sarah for... Oh, it was so much I mean, fun. We've talked about this before, but how just awesome, uh, what an experience it has been, being able to not be as green coming into this third record yes. as an artist, and then um, to be able to have a direction in my mind and to have a, a partner in crime mm -hmm. where we can discuss things out and try totally. new things like you were saying with the synth stuff mm -hmm. and like and not feel guilt I felt a lot of guilt in oh, that in I remember the past. that like yeah. I don't know when you first started making yeah, records yeah of course because you feel like I remember like or our you're first... wasting the engineer's time yep. or whomever is helping you produce or things like that you know because there's always that like when you're first starting out, like I remember our first EP, you're just like, oh, these people I'm working with, they know everything. I'm just like, a, I'm just starting out. Well, mm -hmm. That's not true. Nobody knows your music better than you do. Yeah. And uh, it takes you a long time, which understandably I get it, especially if you work with like pushy people, which there's a lot of people in the music industry that are pushy and that think they know better and that are very confident in their own genius. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So it's it's hard to kind of speak up for yourself and be like, no, this is the direction I want to go. So yeah, I get that completely. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of records that I wasn't proud of. <laughs> sure, uh, or like projects, you know. I mean, I'm I'm super proud of each record, and I have I love the growth. Yeah. From Rhodes to Black Sheep to now mm -hmm. Heavy Love, like just 
what I have been able to grow into as an artist and as a co-producer and like learning how to do the engineering stuff yeah. is yes. hard. <laughs> 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 but um, I don't know. I just think that working with you has been definitely a highlight of my 2020. Oh, and, thank you. Yeah. Same here. And Cheers. So, yeah. Here, cheers. cheers. Bink. <laughs> <laughs> and having all that good coffee from Horizon Line Coffee. I know. Dropping it. Name drop. I know. I'm such a fanboy. <clears throat> I'm like, I'm obsessed. The best coffee I've ever had. That yeah. was like really? a big thing. Yeah. And you're like an East Coast kid. East Coast. Like I've had all the classics and I lived in LA where it's like coffee culture out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that was a big thing when they moved. They moved here about the same time we did. And I was like, oh my gosh got like a a coffee a house coffee yes place. yes yeah you can find that on walnut yeah it's downtown. a downtown it's a hip little, little space and don't they have like vegan go goodies yeah they're all vegans those hipster yeah vegans. hipsters so i'm not super into pa <laughs> vegan pastries but they're pretty great no but yeah. you I, I bring you your pastries from yeah, like scenic route prefer... and from the highland bakery <laughs> yeah i much prefer donuts but whatever yeah <laughs> you do you vegans you do you <laughs> We need the uh, eggs and butter to make yeah, music. Exactly. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, thank you for like this 20 minute video. Of course. Video. Anything else you want to talk about? I don't know. Do you have any questions? I'm trying to think. Um, um, <laughs> trying to think of some funny, weird questions. What do, what would Patreon people want to say or want to hear? I don't know. Maybe that can be another one. You know what? what ask, I'm do you, she didn't ask me anything. Yes. Right. Yes, so I'm going to put this video out. I'm going to put this video out to everybody. Mm -hmm. What kind of donut did you have today? Um, I tried this one that's like, I she called it a cracked donut. I don't know. It's like got powdered sugar on the outside and then some kind of whipped cream stuff on the inside. And nice. I only ate half of it. I don't... Yeah, and then I got into this one, the old-fashioned, and have had only that much of it. Come on, focus up. Focus. Anyway. Yeah. So. I'm a bear claw person. Bear claw. I should have gotten more of those. And you and like, like their... I just like boring, original, like fried, glazed donuts. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. What else did we do this morning? We learned about carbonic maceration. Carbonic maceration. Yes, which is... A process a, of the a beans. A process of fermenting coffee beans. Yeah. And um, I really don't have the sharp enough palate to tell you why something tastes good, but I can tell you it tastes really good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's called The Alchemist. This, yeah. this. That's right. Exactly. And which then I told you about the book. Yes, which I had never heard Paolo. of. Mm -hmm. and now I kind of want to read this. I'm, or I'm going to do uh, audio, audio because I have ADHD. And me sitting down to read something is a nightmare to behold. So I'm going to I'm gonna listen to it while I walk the dogs. It's going to be great. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is we'll put this out and then um, I'll have the patreon patrons ask questions for future videos oh that's a good idea i feel like i've been filming this wrong the whole time you're gonna have one that's really weird and i just figured okay. it out okay well, what did you do did you well i had like you can i got the possible? new what's well, i got the phone where you can do it wide or zoom in oh Oh, I didn't even know you can do that. Yeah, can you do that on yours? Bing, I feel like the bong, first, the first, bing, bong. <laughs> I feel like the first part of this interview, you're going to look all grainy and bizarre and like at a weird angle, but now it looks great. I'm like, man, that's good. I'm a great photographer. Look that's good. Yeah. Bing. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering how people did that on like their social media things yeah. and they can do it. I didn't know that that was old. I'm you an old meet, uh, lady. meet Eleanor? Yes. Yes. Instruments. I was going to say you didn't bring your other instruments today. No, but that's okay. See, this is Sarah's bass that I'm babysitting. It was up on her wall when I went over to her house, and I was like, what? Is that an old music master bass? <laughs> this is, uh, hold on, how do I flip it around? I don't know how to do this. Can you do it while you're? I do that. Look there. at this. Look at this. This is a music master, Fender music master from 1976. It's a short scale bass, so it almost feels like a baby bass when you're playing it. It's awesome. I and got it, it in, in middle school. And I put foam on the bottom like that. 
to make it even more dead. And it sounds exactly like 1976 when you play it. And you put a new fret. Uh, oh yeah, I got it set up. It. I got new strings and I got it set up by, there's this great guy in town. His name's Mike Markovich and he is a luthier and he works on uh, electric and uh, electric basses and electric guitars. And he did an amazing job setting it up. So he took the neck off and messed around. She basically with, uh, went to the spa. He went to the spa, basically. Like week. Cleaned it up and he did some great work on it. And, uh, and uh, Evelyn picked out the pick guard. Yes. So, which I think was an awesome choice. It's, uh, what do they call it? Red tortoise shell or I something? I think so, yeah. yes. Against the Black looks so 70s. I love it. But this thing has been on like 12 albums. It's been on so many records. I'm so proud of her. It's so great. I mean, much better to be in here and being used than on my wall. On your wall. Well, until Evie starts playing bass. Yep. That's... Gotta, gotta encourage that. That would be great. She's going to play everything. If she wants. If she wants. No if she forcing, wants. But no we're forcing. Kinda, we're kind of going to force her. Right? Just like a little bit. So I think we should sign off for now. All right. How long? This is a 26-minute video. Yes. Is that long for Patreon? I don't know. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm coming up. Face. There it is. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, of course. Anytime. Chat. I love anytime. And we'll see how this comes out after it's been edited. All right. Yes, please do edit out my boring bits. Well, I like bear claws. And I kind of like fried donuts, too. <laughs> <laughs> Bear claws are fried too. Bear claws are fried. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, "Good God, Sarah, who's this guy?" We got so much done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so helpful. All right, all right. Bye. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye.